2022, boy, was this year full of elevators. So many elevators. And it's about time to count down the top five best and worst elevators. The ones that were really good were really good and really stood out compared to some others that have gotten in the past. The bad ones really sucked. But in this list, we're mainly going to be focusing on the good ones and save the bad ones for the next day. So it's time to figure out the top five best elevators of the year. Now, there is an obvious rule I have to add to this list. That is, I've had to have written this in the following year. If I've written it in a prior year, even if I didn't film it, it's not allowed on the list. So, for example, the Harris Cherokee Kone's. I've written them since 2014, so they will not count on this list or any other list. So, without further ado, let's get started. You know, there's a reason I bother to check out every bunny I can, even if some of it is predictable, because sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes you'll get the same old, same old Dove Impulse, traditionally boring, Series 1, Schindler HT, you name it. But if you sometimes skip these bones because you might expect something predictable, sometimes you'll miss out on some things you wouldn't be expecting. So, starting off this list, we're going to be taking a look at these Tissendovers. These are actually really, really unique, and this is an office building of all things. They really went all out with their elevators, which is not something you see that often. Especially considering this is just a random office building, not really an area full of other office buildings. Well, not grouped together at least. So, this lone office building, you wouldn't expect to have anything special, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. With this one, at least. For one, this has Dover VR buttons. You can't go wrong with VR buttons. But that's not all this thing has to offer. It has a really, really nice cap. And the biggest twist, they're not hydraulics. They're tractions. And these are pretty fast, going 350 feet per minute. For only six floors, which is nice. That's not the only thing, though. Not only do they have nice cabs, or traction, have good fixtures. They also have very interesting indicators as well, which Tissacrup also did use later, but very, very rarely. Not only do they have really cool cabs and stuff, they have custom lanterns. I mean, this is really cool. I kind of wish I focused more on it in the video I did take of it, but this is really cool. So, they're very nice elevators, they have good fixtures, they have custom fixtures, they ride great, and they even have royalty-free, soothing music to listen to. You can't go wrong with this cab at all. If you are in the Winston-Salem area, you definitely need to check these out. Because you don't want to skip these. These are definitely worth your time. So some of you might have been noticing that I usually film in very underrated areas. Why is that? Because sometimes people don't know what they're missing. Let's take a look at an area like Hickory, for example. Sure, you got places that are getting more noticeable, like, for example, the Hickory Furniture Mart and Valley Hills Mall. But then you got this entire ass downtown area that people are skipping out on, and it is full of gold. How are people missing this? And then you have areas like Mooresville. Not really too much to write home about, but if you look hard, you'll find some pretty good stuff. This area, for example, is home to three interesting elevators. A 300A with van or system fixtures, which is kind of boring, not gonna lie, but it's not very common. And then you got this place over here that has a Series 5 NEL. That's also pretty rare. Not only do you have those two elevators, you got this building right here, which has a fucking ISIS. Again, it's kind of crazy how much people miss. 
Number four spot will take us to another underrated area, Waynesville. It generally doesn't have a lot of elevators you can film, but there's a couple good things here. And if you look really hard, you'll find gold like this. This actually has a lot of historical value than you might expect. For one thing, this is a really nice gated elevator with CJ Anderson fixtures. It has some really awesome call panels and also has that classic HS panel we all know and love on many different vintage elevators throughout the United States. You also have this really cool cab material too, which you could definitely tell is really, really old. That's not the only thing about this elevator that's interesting. It's also Waynesville's first ever elevator put in in 1927, despite what the records say. So yeah, this is a very historical elevator. Now, it is single speed, which does present some problems, like very sudden stops, which is really my only complaint about this elevator. Despite that, that's really the only problem the elevator has, is just sudden stops, but that's pretty common with single speed elevators, so you're going to get kind of used to that if you've run many single speed elevators. If anyone's able to get to this elevator, definitely film it. It's definitely worth your time. So we talked about these underrated areas and why I visit them, but let's talk about overrated areas. Like areas like Charlotte or Myrtle Beach, for example. I've been to these areas and I have filmed some stuff that many people have filmed before, but it's also really shocking on what hasn't been filmed before. You would think that areas that are really common places that elevator filmers go to would have been already 100% filmed, right? Well, that's why you're wrong, because there's actually a quite a couple places that people haven't filmed that even I'm shocked people haven't touched. And if you look hard, you might find some gold. That brings us over to the Knoxville area. Obviously, I've filmed many iconic elevators over there, like plenty. But I've also filmed a lot of underrated elevators, too. And number three spot actually comes from that area. In the Supreme Court building, of all places. I don't think many people have thought of checking these out because, you know, it's a Supreme Court building. You would have to go through security and stuff like that in most places. But here, the elevators are free to get to, and you don't need to check in or anything. They're right there at this one corner of the building that anyone can enter without being questioned. Well, as of the filming of that video, I did. It might have changed now. Who knows? But these are home to very historic elevators that have been redone and stuff and replaced. I could definitely tell this 60s Otis cab has replaced something very old. And it also got a slap on in 2003 with a, by National Elevators with Adams Pictures, which I'm not a big fan of the mod. Tossing that aside, even though the cabs have been fully replaced by Otis in the 60s, these are some of the most tasteful cabs I've ever been into. Excluding the replacements and all that stuff, you can definitely tell that they're trying to keep the spirit of the Supreme Court building alive. Look at these classical designs, for example. You can definitely tell it fits right in with the building, even though the cab is not original. And not only that, floors one for free have these really, really cool art deco floor indicators, which still work. And it's very nice to see. Not only that, but these cabs run really well. Like, shockingly well. They're also pretty fast, too, given the age, which is really nice. Be sure to check out this building, too, because the architecture here is fucking amazing. Like, it's foam-worthy good. I mean, like, damn, this place looks amazing. Now, number two might look like I am breaking the rules, but technically I did not ride this elevator. I filmed it back in 2020 when it was a service elevator and people couldn't ride it. But things have changed. For some reason, you are allowed to ride this elevator despite it being a manual elevator, which 
How many places allow you to ride manual elevators without the help of, of an employee? I mean, that's shocking. When me and Jackson met up, we decided to come check out this elevator for ourselves. Now, Jackson, he's filmed this elevator before. In fact, when he filmed it a couple months before the meetup, there was usually an operator riding inside the elevator. But when we met up this time in April, there was no one operating the elevator. So we were basically free to operate it ourselves. This also means this is also my first time riding a manual elevator as well as operating it. Which is a little awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, you get the hang of it. It's really not that hard to learn about it. It's just keeping constant pressure, whether on the buttons or a lever or anything like that. And this elevator runs really good. Which is a miraculous for an elevator that's really, really old and has the old equipment to it. Despite the renovations to this building when this furniture store took over, this elevator probably isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And it better stay that way because this thing is amazing. Okay, before we get to number one, we need to go over some honorable mentions. A lot of you are probably shocked that this elevator didn't even make it into the list. Well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, this cab is really, really tiny. Like, ridiculously tiny. Only supporting up to a thousand pounds. Not only that, this thing does not run very good. So, yeah, this thing needs some proper maintenance. But even then, I've run better gated elevators than this. It's really cool though, don't get me wrong, but there's definitely better out there. Even though these are really cool, these are also really busy and kind of slow for the amount of floors it's given, so there's that. But hey, it gets a mention on this list because these are really cool elevators. Man, you should have seen my reaction when I first found these. It, it was something. These elevators are really, really cool. The overworld CJ Anderson is not common at all. The only reason they're not mentioned on the top five because um, they're kind of slow and one of the cabs kind of runs very questionable. Which doesn't shock me considering that this building is mostly abandoned. So, but hey, they work at least. These elevators are epic. Don't get me wrong about that. I had to go see these myself after watching two people's videos because this was more of a recent find. While these are epic and would have made a list, I honestly think there, there were better elevators to list on the list besides this one. Don't get me wrong, it's epic, but it barely made a list. These Montgomery Coney's right here have so much personality. I'm shocked that no one has ever filmed these at all. They have so much personality. They have, these have innovation security, really nice cab designs, and they're scenic. And also are pretty fast too. Now it's time to see what made number one. Which elevator out of all the ones I filmed was the best? be shocked that I went with this as my number one but the experience is so damn worth it there are a total of two chimney elevators here and you can ride these whether you're a guest or not which is a very nice touch but these are old chimney elevators that were installed by Otis in 1914 obviously the cab got redone so that it's automatic and not manual which Especially considering that they still have operators for this was kind of a pointless mod. It's not a bad one by any means, but it's very strange to see, especially when there's still people patrolling the elevator. But experiencing these in person, whether no matter which one you ride, is an experience like no other. Not only are these gated, but there's a side gate too. So technically there's two entrances to the elevator. Now, depending on which operator you'll, you'll get, which most of them are really nice, like this guy, they will take you up to a certain floor and they'll let you off. 
With this guy, he let me off so I can look at some historical photos and stuff, and I did just that. Afterwards, I called it and went back down. This thing rides very, very, very smooth. And the cab has a lot of historical value to it. It looks amazing. Despite the GAL mods it has, which I still don't completely understand why they did it, but regardless of all that, if you've never ridden these elevators before, and if you're in the Asheville area, definitely come this place. Not only do they have a lot of really cool elevators, some better than others, obviously, but it, you need to check these elevators out because regardless if you're a guest or not, these are 100% worth riding. And that's why it's the best elevator, or well, elevators, I'm counting the other one anyway, despite the fact that I've never ridden it, of 2022. Definitely come check these out if you have, because they are worth it. And that's my list for the top 5 best elevators of 2022. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and now I'm going to go ahead and suffer as I make the top 5 worst list for tomorrow. Oh, I'm so not ready for this. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.